The Battle of the Niemen River was the second greatest battle of the Polish-Soviet War. It took place near the middle Niemen River between the cities of Sawałki, Grodno, and Białystok. After having suffered almost complete defeat in the Battle of Warsaw, Mikhail Tukhachevsky's Red Army forces tried to establish a defensive line, against Józef Pilsudski's counter-attacking Polish army, running northward from the Polish-Lithuanian border to Polesia, and centering on Grodno. Between September 15 and September 25, 1920, the Poles outflanked the Soviets, once again defeating them. After the mid-October Battle of the Sara River, the Polish army had reached the tarnopol dubno minsk drissa line. Although this part of the conflict is usually referred to as a battle both in Polish and Russian historiography, some historians argue that it was more of a military operation with a series of battles fought often several hundred kilometers apart. Chapter 1, Prelude Following the Battle of Warsaw in mid-August, the armies in the center of the Russian front fell into chaos. Mikhail Tukhachevsky ordered a general retreat toward the Bug River, but by then he had lost contact with most of his forces near Warsaw, and all the Bolshevik plans had been thrown into disarray by communication failures. Russian armies retreated in a disorganized fashion, with entire divisions panicking and disintegrating. The Red Army's defeat was so great and unexpected that, at the instigation of Pilsudski's detractors, the Battle of Warsaw is often referred to in Poland as the Miracle at the Vistula. Previously unknown documents from Polish Central Military Archive found in 2004 proved, that the successful breaking of Red Army radio communications ciphers by Polish cryptographers played a great role in the victory. Although successful, the Polish counter-attack in the Battle of Warsaw created an awkward situation for Polish Commander-in-Chief Józef Pilsudski. Most of his forces were facing north while Russian heartland was located east of the front rather than north. Because of that, the Polish army needed some time to reorganize and regroup before a new offensive could be mounted. The Russian commanding officer Mikhail Tukhachevsky took this as an opportunity to establish a new defensive line along the Niemen River, initially safe from Polish forces. The new Soviet line ran from the Russian-Lithuanian demarcation line in the north, to the dense forests and swamps of Polesia, with the city of Grodno as a pivot. Chapter 2 Opposing forces. Both the Polish army and the opposing Red Army suffered heavy casualties in the course of war, and especially during the Russian summer offensive of 1920. Moreover, both opposing armies were still in the phase of organization. By August, the Poles mobilized almost one million men, which allowed them to reinforce most frontline units to approximately 50 to 60 percent of their nominal strength. Out of that number almost 350 000 were in active service on the Eastern Front, while the rest served in other units or were still training. The Polish brigades and divisions were usually ill-equipped, but were commanded by experienced officers, veterans of the Great War and the subsequent Polish-Ukrainian War. Moreover, with fresh forces arriving to the front almost every week the reserves of the Polish CIC were sufficient for waging an offensive war. The Red Army suffered heavy casualties in the Battle of Warsaw in August and lacked organization. Although the reserves of fresh, untrained recruits were almost unlimited, the Russian units lacked experienced officers. Also, in the course of the war the Soviet forces lost large parts of their artillery, which was usually used on the battlefield as a last stand against the assaulting enemy. This tactic allowed the Poles to outgun their enemies. Also, the Russian air forces were almost non-existent while the Polish army could use its few aeroplanes to successfully disrupt enemy moves and conduct intelligence operations. The Red Army was organized in several fronts. The Western Front facing the Poles had more than 700,000 soldiers in August. However, a large part of its forces were either taken prisoner of war by the Poles, interned in East Prussia or routed. After the arrival of 68,000 reinforcements in August and additional 20,500 in September, the forces of Tukhachevsky reached approximately 20 to 40 percent of their nominal strength. However, both the morale and the reinforcement abilities of the Russian troops were seriously degraded. 
Chapter 2 Section 1, Polish Army The order of battle of the Polish army is after the reorganization of September 11. The position of units as of September 15, 1920. The armies and divisions are listed north to south. Chapter 3, Plans of Both Sides Russian headquarters seriously overestimated its own forces. Sergei Komenev ordered Tukhachevsky to mount an all-out counter-offensive as soon as the reorganization of Russian forces was complete. By August 26 the Russians manned the Niemenschera Schieslich line with rump forces to escape the disaster at Warsaw. However, fresh reinforcements from mainland Russia were arriving on a daily basis and by mid-September Tukhachevsky managed to recreate most divisions lost in mid-August. His forces quickly rose to over 73.000 soldiers and 220 pieces of artillery. Following Komenev's orders, Tugachevsky planned an offensive of three armies, the 3rd, 15th and 16th. The Russian forces were to sweep southwards, retaking the Brest fortress and Białystok, with the final objective being the city of Lublin. There the Russians could expect reinforcements from other Russian units operating south of the Pinska marshes in the Ukraine, as well as experienced troops that could be pulled back from other fronts of the Russian civil war. At the same time Yosef Pilsudski's main objective was to reorganize his forces and break through the enemy lines along the Niemen before Russian defenses stiffened, thus disrupting any enemy counter-attack attempts. On September 10, during a staff meeting with his generals, Pilsudski proposed a plan of a major operation near Niemen and Szczera rivers. Two Polish armies were to tie down main Russian forces by a frontal attack aimed at Grodno and Wolkowisk. Simultaneously, a strong force detached from the Second Army was to outflank the Russians from the north, through a strip of land between Sejny and Druskianiki controlled by Lithuanian forces and attack the Russian army from behind, in the vicinity of Lida. In the south, the 4th Army was to assault Wolkowisk and prepare to close the encirclement, 232-235 The first action took place on 20 September, with the 21st Division attacking Grodno, supported by the Volunteer Division and the 3rd Legionary Division on either flank. Between 23-25 September, the battle was evenly balanced. However, the flanking attack by General Asinski's Savauki Group, the 1st Legionary Division, and the 1st Lithuanian Biela-Russian Division from Sejny, took Druskianiki on 23 September and cut the Soviet 3rd Army's supply line of the grodno vilno Railway. The Polish cavalry reached Radun and then Lida. On 26 September, General Krajowski's cavalry took Pinska, cutting the Soviet 4th Army's supply line. Tukhachevsky ordered a retreat, 233 to 235. 